Hi everyone, in this video we're going to talk about how to determine the conclusion of a hypothesis test. So before we do any examples, there's one really important fact. So important. So in your hypothesis test, you always have an alpha, that's your level of significance, and you always have a p-value. So if your p-value is less than or equal to alpha, you're going to reject the null hypothesis, so you'll reject H0, always. If the p-value is bigger than alpha, then you're going to fail to reject the null hypothesis, so fail to reject H sub 0. So small reject, small reject, small reject, small reject. Okay, let's look at a couple of fake examples. So let's say we're doing a hypothesis test. And our null hypothesis is that the population mean is equal to 100. And all, our alternative hypothesis is that the population mean is less than 100. Okay. And let's further suppose that our alpha in this problem is 5%, so 0 0.05. And that our p-value in this problem is, say, mm, let's see, maybe 0 0.023. 0 0.023. So what would be the conclusion in this case? What would be the result of the test? Well, in this case, the p-value is less than or equal to alpha, right? 0 0.023 is smaller than 0 0.05. So in this case, we have that the p-value is less than or equal to alpha. So in this case, we would say reject h sub 0. Let's go a little bit further. Now, everyone does the interpretations a little bit differently, but we can give a pretty good one based off this. So because we're rejecting the null hypothesis, we reject this. So we have enough evidence to say that this is true. So we would say at the 5% level of significance, at the 5%, that comes from the alpha, always, level of significance. And because we're rejecting the null hypothesis, we would say there is enough evidence or sufficient evidence, sufficient evidence to claim that. So again, we rejected the null hypothesis. So you start by mentioning the level of significance at the 5% level of significance. We rejected the null hypothesis. So there is enough evidence to say the statement is true. So there is enough evidence to say that mu is less than 100. So typically, you would, you would say this in words. So what is mu? Well, we don't know, right? It depends on the actual question, right? It will vary, right? It will vary. Uh, we don't know what mu is in this problem, so we can't really be uh, very specific. Let's do another example. Say we have null hypothesis. P, which is the population proportion, is equal to 0 0.80. And then the alternative hypothesis, let's do not equal to 0 0.80. Okay. And let's say that our alpha this time um, is 0 0.01. And our p-value is 0.24. So in this case, the p-value is bigger than alpha. So our p-value is bigger than alpha. So in this case, we fail to reject. So fail to reject the null hypothesis. So we fail to reject this. So we don't have enough evidence to say this is true. If we reject this, then we do have enough evidence to say this is true. So we fail to reject. So it would be the same as what's up here, except we would say there is not. So let me just paraphrase it and say there is not sufficient evidence. to claim p is not equal to 0 0.80, right? If we would have rejected this, then there would be sufficient evidence to say that p is not equal to 0 0.80. So whenever you reject the null hypothesis, there is sufficient evidence to support H1. If you fail to reject the null hypothesis, there is not sufficient evidence to support H1. So I hope this video has made sense. Um, that's it.